Hello, uh, welcome to another lecture video of for uh, law 2023 business laws and regulations. Now, for this lecture video, we will be discussing credit transactions. Um, tawag dito? Um, iahabo lang tong lecture video na ito kasi uh, supposedly after partnership, we will be discussing corporation. Pero based sa napagkasunduan during the last meeting, among those um, instructors handling the subject matter, uh, napagkasunduan na credit transactions na lang ang isama sa midterm examination. Okay? So, uh, in the same way na nag-discuss tayo yung discussion natin dun sa may limited partnership, we will not go through all the articles for credit transactions. We will just discuss yung Ano niya, yung subject matter via a question and answer format. So for the first question natin in credit transaction, so we will ask, what is credit? Familiar tayo dito. And lagi natin ginagamit to parang account. Uh, account side, debit, tsaka credit. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng credit? So credit is defined as a person's ability to borrow money by virtue of confidence or trust proposed in him by that lender that he will pay what he may promise. So pag sinabing credit, ito yung standing mo with respect to a transaction, but particularly a borrowing transaction or a lending transaction. Kung baga, mas mas na, na, naririnig niyo siya sa tawag na credit standing. Iba pag pag kapag ang isang tao ay mayroong maayos or positive na credit standing, you would expect na yung person na yon ay pagkakatiwalaan ng mga financial institutions, ng mga banko, ng mga lending companies na kapag pinautang siya, kaya niya magbayad at historically nagbabayad siya ng mga utang niya. Kaya naging maayos yung kanyang credit standing. Yung may mga negative na credit standing naman, yun yung mga naka-blacklist na. Kunyari, nag-apply nag for a credit card, then nag-bill, hindi binayaran. Nag-demand letter, hindi pa rin binayaran. So yan, syempre, i-report ire yan among the financial institutions, among the banks, among the credit card companies. Ano ngayon? Hindi siya, hindi na yan papautangin. Or kung ha, ma, may mautang man siya, napakahirap para, para makakuha siya ng ng ano ng loan yan kasi yung credit niya yung credit niya ay negative na on the negative side na sa so pag credit yung pinag-uusapan ito yung kakayahan ng isang tao na makapagpautang uh, mangutang rather di makapagpautang mangutang dahil may kumpiyansa sa iyo may kumpiyansa at tiwala yung nagpapautang sa kanya either dahil historically nagbabayad siya or merong security na merong security kaya okay yung kanyang credit transactions alam nung mga nagpapautang na kung hindi man tayo makabayad dito meron tayong ay meron, hindi man tayo makakolekta dito meron tayong maaaring habulin diyan po mapasok yung credit transactions so credit transactions refers to refer to Agreements based on trust or belief, or someone of someone on the ability of another person to comply with his obligations. So yun nga. Pagdating sa credit transaction, kasi pag uh, ginagamit natin sa accounting, if a transaction is on credit, so pa utang siya, na pa utang siya. So pag sinabing credit transactions, utangan ito. No, merong merong transactions na. Uh, yung isa mag-let go ng kanyang money or ng property, yung kabila hindi magbabayad agad. Walang exchange, walang exchange, uh, walang simultaneous exchange kung baga. Yung isang party, in the future pa siya magbabayad. So kung ikaw yung kabilang party, will I enter into this credit transaction with this person? Naniniwala ba ako sa kanya na in the future, kung ano man yung inextend ko na credit sa kanya, ay makukollect ako in the future. And that is a credit transaction. Now, uh, under our, uh, under our tawag dito, under our uh, civil code, maraming paraan para 
maayos yung credit transactions na yan. Maraming mga tinatawag na security transactions. So you have this uh, loan obligation no? para ma-secure yung transaction. Pag sinabi ma-secure, ibig sabihin para masigurado na yung nagpautang ay makakolekta. Uh, may mga accessory contracts na maaaring uh, pasukin or pag-usapan yung mga partido just in case hindi makakolekta doon sa main obligation which is a contract of loan merong seguridad no merong paraan para makakolekta pa rin yung creditor okay since i mentioned security yeah what is security it is something given deposited or serving as a means to ensure the fulfillment or enforcement of an obligation or of protecting some interest in the property. So it's security transaction. Minsan yung credit transactions. Tinatawag din siyang security transactions. So parang security. So um, ang pinaka-common na kaya kong i-example dito ay sangla. Alam niyo yung sanglaan. Parang uh, may, may, nag, may, may sanglaan at may gustong magsangla ng kanyang, let's say, Um, ano bang sinasangla? Jewelry. Yan, hikaw. So, ito sabihin ng magsasangla. Ito, hikaw to. 18 karat gold yan. Saudi, Saudi. Whatever. Yan. Appraise mo. So, itong, mag, magsasang, itong sanglaan, appraise mo yung prop. Sabi niya, oh, this, uh, this jewelry, piece of jewelry, is worth, let's say, <clears throat> 20,000. 20,000. O kung 20,000, magkano mo ko kapautangin? Sige, papautangin kita ng 10. Sangla mo sa akin yan. Ano yun? May security. Ah, sige, papautangin kita ng 10. Ah, akin ay yung, ano, yung iyong hikaw o yung alahas o ano man yung 10. Sa ideal na sitwasyon, sa ideal na sitwasyon, babalik yung nagsangla, babayaran niya yung 10,000 para mabawi niya yung sinangla niya. Ganun naman talaga na if you are familiar with the sangla transaction. Pabalik ka ngayon, uy, kailangan ko ng bayaran utang ko para makuha ko yung nakasangla. Uh, bibigay, babaya, ito na yung 10,000 na utang ko or with interest yun, 11,000 yun. O ano man yung arrangement ninyo. And then, uh, akin na po yung sinangla kung uh, hikaw or relo o kung ano man yung ano na yan, alahas na sinangla. Tapos na. Pero what is hindi makabayad? No? Hindi makabayad. Dabating na yung due date, nag-demand na, oh, yung utang ng 10,000 na yung pagbinabayaran. Pag hindi mo yan binayaran, uh, hahabulin ko yung utang mo sa pamamagitan ng pag-enforce doon sa sinangla mo, kikaw. Uh, isusubasta ko to. Uh, di ba yung utang sa 10,000? Oh. Kung hindi mo yan babayaran, ito, itong hikaw na ito, sabihin ko to the public na for sale na siya. Ibebenta ko siya to the public by way of public auction. Tapos kung sino man makabili, worth 20,000 yun, di ba? O, bilihin nyo. Siguro may bibili naman dyan, 10, 15. Kung magkano man yung mapagkunan, mapagbetahan doon, kukunin ko yung owing to me. Diba? Kunyari akin yung uh, ano man, yung utang na kailangan bayaran with interest pa yun at with ano, with cost of sales, di ba? Siyempre, nagpa-advertise ka, gumastos ka para magawa yung subasta na yan. So, ganun nag-work yung security. Meron kang obligation, meron kang main obligation, and you want to uh, ensure that you will be able to collect on that obligation. Nagpa-utang ako eh, nag-extend ako ng credit eh. So, paano ka naman masisigurado na makakabawi ako? Di ba? Ano, Nag-let go na ako ng pera ko eh. Papabayaan na lang ako ng batas na pag, oh, pag wala kang makolekta, edi wala na. Hindi. Merong protection yung batas na ipinaprovide dyan. So maaari na at the time na kayo ay nag-uutangan, hingan mo siya ng security. Uh, pwede, pwede siya magpa-co-borrower para pag hindi siya makabayad, habulin mo yung co-borrower. Surety. Yan. Dito sa credit transactions sa pag-uusapan natin, pwede siyang mag-pledge. Pwede siyang mag-real uh, uh, estate mortgage or shuttle mortgage. Yan. So may dalawang uri ng security transaction. Si personal, 
tsaka real or property. Pag sinabing personal, ito yung surety o kaya guarantor. Or, or mas, mas kilala niya siguro sa tawag na co-borrower. Kunyari, si X, yan. Si X, gusto niyang mangutang kay Y. Sabi ni Y, sige, papautangan kita, pero paano ako makakasigurado na makakakolekta ako sa'yo? Di ba, pautangan kita ng, ano eh, ng 100,000 eh. What if after one month, no? Ay, 100,000 lang pala. What if after one month, nangungulit ako sa ito, hindi ka makabayad, paano naman ako? Willing, willing ako magpautang, pero I need security. Yeah. So ngayon, papasok ngayon sa kwento si Garantor. Yeah. Ano mangyayari kay Garantor? Ano yung usapan nila nilang tatlo? So, ang usapan ay ganito. O sige, pautangin mo, Y, si X, ng 100,000. Mang, pag dumating na yung due date, mangulekta ka sa kanya. Hindi, sa, hindi kay G, ha? mangulekta ka kay X. At kapag si X ay hindi makapagbayad, maaari kang pumunta sa akin. Ako ang magbabayad ng utang ni X. Ganon yung trabaho ng isang garantor. At dahil tao ang kausap mo dito, personal ang tawag dyan sa so, ganyang uri ng security. Yan. Ang pinagkaiba ng garanto sa surety, sa surety, ang arrangement ay o oh, Y, pautangin mo si X ng 100,000. At kapag nag-judy na yan, pwede kang dumiretsyo sa akin. Ganun yung surety. Ma- siya mismo pwede mong puntahan even without going through X. Yung garanto rin hindi. Hindi ka mapansinin ng garanto kapag oh, nangungolekta ka sa garanto. Tatanungin ng garanto, nangungolekta ka na ba kayo X? Pag sinabi mo hindi pa, eh, hindi ka niya babayaran. Magiging liable lang yung garanto kapag hindi makapagbayad yung sh- yung Uh, main debtor, yung principal debtor natin. But in case of surety, surety binds himself solidarily liable with the principal debtor. Kaya naman, yung creditor, maaaring dumiretsyo sa pagkolekta doon sa surety. Again, ang mga involved dito, puro tao at puro tiwala. <laughs> puro tiwala. Kapag, kapag ang nag-garantiya ng utang ng isang tao, for example, si Sino ba? Sino ba mga mayayaman na yun? Sabel de Ayala. Sabi ni Sabel de Ayala, sige. Uh, pautangin yan. Akong bahala. Pag hindi nakapagbayad, ako mananang. Diba? That's Sabel de Ayala. So, uh, you have, meron siyang magandang credit. No? So, pag siya ay nag-extend ng personal security, maniniwala ka. No? Maniniwala. Siyempre, meron technicalities behind this one. But the principle behind may ding principle ng tinutukoy ko about personal security. Ganun siya nag-work. Compare doon sa, no, nakita ni si, kunyari si J, sabi ni J, o J, J, ako si J. Pautangin mo siya, why? Bikay mo ni 100,000 pag hindi nakabayad akong, ako yung, ano, akong mananagot. Sabi ni Y kay J, sino ka ba? Ba't ka nandidi? Pwede kita kilala. I don't know your credit standing. So kapag ganyan, why may refuse? Hindi ko naman kilala yung garantor mo, yung malay ko dyan sa garantor mo. Hindi, hindi siya kilala and I don't know his credit standing. So ganun yung personal security. Nakadepende siya doon sa credit standing ng tao na nag-serve as garantor or surety. As opposed to real or property security, as the term would imply, nakadepende, yung security is not in the form of the credit standing of the person, but by providing a property which will serve as security for non-payment in case of non-payment of the principal obligation. Sabi ni XKY, Y, y pa utang naman 100,000. Sabi ni Y kay X, paano naman ako makakasigurado na makakabayad ka? O, syempre, tanggal na sa kwento si S, si G, si J, tsaka si Isabel de Ayala. Kasi yung mga yun, personal security. O, sabi ni X, o, sige, ganito. May lupa ako. Yan. Ang lupa ko ay worth 1 million. Uh, ito ang titulo ng lupa ko. Bigay ko siya sa'yo. And let us enter into a contract of real estate mortgage. O, anong, anong mapapala ni Y dito? Sabi ni, ang sitwasyon, in, in case X will not be able to pay the 100,000, Y will back now be allowed to foreclose on the mortgage. Meaning, Y will be allowed to Uh, conduct a public uh, option 
for the sale of the uh, property of X. Sabi niya, oh, hindi ka nakabayad ng one year, ano, bayad. Dandaman ka muna, syempre. Bayad ka. O ayaw magbayad. O sige, magbibigyan ko sa'yo ng notice na ipapublic auction ko na ito. Mag-file na ako for judicial or extrajudicial foreclosure of the mortgage. So, doon na naman. It is for the protection of Y. Diba? On the part of Y, hindi niya makolekta yung 100,000, pero meron siyang magagawa para makolekta niya pa rin yung utang niya na yun. Yung pinautang niya, rather. Okay. So, before we go to the security portion, let us talk about a loan. Uh, ang security ay mga uh, accessory contracts. Ibig sabihin, andyan sila to secure a principal obligation, a main obligation. At dahil accessory contracts sila, nakadepende yung kanilang buhay, yung kanilang legalidad, doon sa main obligation, doon sa contract of loan. Ibig sabihin, hindi, hindi, hindi ka pwedeng mag-mortgage o for example, o oh, sige, i-mortgage ko tong lupa. Oh, tatanungin ka para saan? Ba't ka nag-mortgage? May utang ba? Wala. <laughs> Bakit? Ba't may isasangla ang lupa o ang kotse o ang to ano pa mang bagay? Kung wala naman palang utang na sinesiguro no? o sine, sinesecure, diba? dapat meron mo ng principal obligation. And without a principal obligation, itong mga bagay na ito, yung mga security transactions or credit transactions natin, ay walang kwenta at hindi actually sila mag exist They will not exist on their own. They cannot exist on their own. Hindi pwedeng mortgage lang, walang loan. Hindi pwede. Pledge lang, walang loan. Hindi pwede yung mga ganang klaseng sitwasyon. Kung merong pledge, kung merong mortgage, dapat they are constituted or instituted to secure a principal obligation. Kung walang principal loan to be secured, then there's no need for pledge or mortgage. So what is a loan? A loan is a contract where one of the parties delivers to another either something not consumable so that the latter may use the same for a certain time and return it, in which case it is called comodatum, or money or other consumable things upon the condition that the same amount of the same kind and quality shall be paid, in, in which case the contract is simply called a loan or mutuum. So pag sinabing loan, under the civil code, dalawang uri actually siya. Meron tayong komodatum at meron tayong mutuum. Um, sa Tagalog, ang pinaka-equivalent ng komodatum ay pahiram. Pero pang, pang pahiram, parang pahiram ng pera. Parang loan din yan. Pero, pero pag sinabing pahiram, pa niya, pahiram ng bisikleta. Yan. Pagamit ng bisikleta. Sa so, gagamitin ng bisikleta, ibabalik mo. Diba? Yun yung pahiram. Yan. The latter may use the same and then return it. O, pahiram ng calculator. Komodatum yun. Pakomodatum ng calculator. Kasi after mong gamitin, kailangan mo siyang ibalik. Yan. Kung ano mismo yung pina, pinahiram sa'yo, yun yung ibabalik mo, hindi pwedeng ibang bagay. Kaya hindi pwedeng not, not, not consumable. Kasi pag consumable, hindi mo pwedeng, kunyari, pahiram ng tubig. Paano mo ibabalik? Inumin mo, tas inuluwa mo ulit. Tas, di, baka di ripat eh. No? Or bigas. Diba? Anong pahiram ng bigas? Isasain ko siya, tas magiging kanin yun, tas ibabalik ko sa'yo. Dapat non consumable Unless i-display mo lang siya. Pahiram ng bigas, i-display ko. Tapos kapag okay na, ibabalik ko na siya sa'yo. In that case, komodatong pa rin yun. Pero as a general rule, yung mga consumable things are not the subject of komodatong kasi pag komodatong, kailangan mong ibalik kung ano mismo yung pinahiram sa'yo. So pahiram ng bisikleta, okay. Pahiram ng kotse, babalik ko sa'yo yung kotse mismo. Pahiram ng calculator, pahiram pa ba? Ang ganda ng libro na yan, ah. Ano nagsulat niyan? Pabasa naman. O, pahiram. Yan. Komodatum yun. Pahiram. Yung mutuum, ito yung pautang. In ating, in Tagalog, no? in our language, ito yung pautang naman ako ng sampung libo. O, o, babayaran ko after two weeks sa sweldo. Yan. 
O, pag dumating na yung two weeks, dapat ba kung ano yung hini, inutang mo two weeks ago, yun din mismo yung mga pirasong pera na ibabalik mo sa kanya? Hindi. Hindi required yun. So, pag ganun, pag pinautang mo, pwede ka magbayad ng ibang uh, ba, ibang iba ang ibabayad mo. Pero dapat same kind and quality. Or pera mismo. O, kung nangutang ka ng 10,000, babayad ka ng 10,000. And you have this stipulation, written stipulation to pay interest. So yun yung pautang. So medyo iba yung pahiram sa pautang. Pag nanghiram ka kung ano mismo yung hiniram mo, yun yung ibabalik mo. Pag nangutang ka, which is matuong, pwede ibang, actually, ibang bagay talaga yung ibabalik mo sa kanya. Alangan naman yung kung ano mismo yung mga bills and coins na inutang mo, yun din ang ibabalik mo. Yun, hindi ganun. Okay? So dahil may balikan dito, pahiram ng kotse, o paano ko masasigurado na mababalik mo yan sa akin? Ay, yun yung tanong eh. O pahiram ng, pahiram ng bisikleta, sure ka ba mababalik mo sa akin yan? O pautang ng sampung libo, o paano ko masasigurado na babalik mo sa akin yung sampung lima? Babayaran mo yan two weeks from now. Ayan. Kailangan mo ngayon ng siguridad. Kailangan ng creditor ng peace of mind na yung pinahiram niya or yung pinautang niya ay mababalik sa kanya. Paano natin gagawin yan? So we have these credit transactions here. Una, pledge. Then we have mortgage. Yan. And then yung mortgage may dalawang uri. Real estate mortgage and shuttle mortgage. But let us first define a pledge. Pledge is an accessory contract. Accessory lang siya. Nakasalala yung buhay niya doon sa principal contract, which is a loan, whether kumadatong or mutuong. Which is a mutuong. Whereby a debtor delivers to the creditor or to a third person a movable or personal property or a document evidencing incorporeal rights, like shares of stocks to secure, yun yung purpose niya, to secure the fulfillment of a principal obligation, like a loan obligation, with the condition that when the obligation is satisfied, the thing delivered shall be returned to the pledger with all its fruits and accessions, if any. So parang iniisip mo, isang lato ng sangla. Hindi. Ang, ink, ang Tagalog ng pledge ay hindi sangla, kundi prenda. So, sa pledge, kailangan i-deliver. So, si X ay nangutang kay Y. So, si, si Y nagpautang siya ng 100,000. Gusto ni Y na makasigurado na makakolekta siya ng 100,000. Kaya sabi niya kay X, gawa ka ng mag-contract of pledge tayo to secure the fulfillment of the principal obligation which is for you to pay 100,000. Ang sabi niya, meron ako dito, goal, ano, meron ako dito, bisikleta, worth 300,000 yan. O, may mga ganong klaseng bisikleta na nga sin. Worth 300,000. O, di-deliver ko siya sa'yo. Kailangan i-deliver, ha? Yan, deliver. O, bibigay ni X kay, hindi ibibigay, iaabot ni X kay, o, 300,000 para si, si, siguridad, ipiprend ako sa'yo. Ito, aking um, mountain bike worth 300,000 to secure my 100,000 obligation. O kapag hindi ako nakapagbayad ng 100,000, sige, ibenta mo na yan. 300,000 ko na uh, bisikleta. Ganun yung pledge. What is a mortgage? A mortgage is also an accessory contract whereby the debtor secures to the creditor the fulfillment of a principal obligation, just like a pledge, especially subjecting to such security <clears throat> immovable, which ang tawag natin ay shuttle mortgage, or an immovable property, or realize over immovable property, which in, in which case ang tawag natin ay real estate mortgage, in case the principal obligation is not paid or complied with at the time stipulated. So dito naman, sa mortgage, you can, uh, you can tawag dito, enter into a shuttle mortgage involving movable or personal properties, or real estate mortgage involving immovable or real rise over immovable properties. Okay. Um, kung mapapansin ninyo, sa mortgage, walang delivery na binanggit. 
So, dito mayroong delivery. Sa pledge may delivery. Pero sa mortgage, delivery is not required. Although mayroong registration requirement, sa mortgage walang delivery. So hindi mo kailangan i-deliver yung movable property mo or yung immovable property. So you remain in continue and continue to uh, possess your property in case of a mortgage. So what are the similarities between pledge and mortgage? So both are accessory contracts. And we have, I have mentioned that before. Both the pledger and the mortgagor must be the absolute owner of the property. So you cannot pledge or mortgage. Ano mortgage? Kainis ng typo na to. You cannot pledge or mortgage a property which does not belong to you. So, hindi ikaw yung ano? Hindi ikaw yung may ari ng kotse pero pinaprenda mo yung kotse. Hindi ikaw yung may ari ng lupa pero bino mortgage mo yung lupa. That is not allowed. The the pledger or the mortgagor must be the absolute owner of the property. Does it mean that it is the debtor who is ano? Who is making the pledge? The pledge? No. It is not necessary that the pledger is also the debtor. So, maaari, for example, you have the debtor and you have the creditor. X is the owner of the car. Yan. Maaari na yung utang is between debtor and creditor, but to secure the obligation of the debtor, X will pledge his car. That is possible. Pwede yan. So it's not necessary that the debtor is the absolute owner of the property. No. Ang importante si X, yung, which, who is not the debtor, but X is the pledger. So it's pledge ni X yung sarili niyang kotse para masecure yung obligation ni debtor. Okay yan. Pwede yan. Both the pledger and the mortgagor, bukod sa pagiging absolute owner, must have the free disposal of their property or they be authorized to do so. Dapat they have the, this free disposal meaning they are not suffering from civil interdiction or insanity or anything which uh, with or any defect which would prevent them from uh, disposing of that property so let's continue yung mortgage natin <clears throat> surprise na na ice na siya what else are the similarities? So the team preferred a security may be sold at public auction when the principal obligation becomes due and no payment is made by the debtor. So whether pledge yan or mortgage, yung mortgagee or yung pledgee ay merong karapatan na ibenta at public auction yung uh, property subject of the pledge or the mortgage. And the debtor retains ownership of the team given a security. So kahit na i-deliver yan o hindi, the debtor continues to be the owner of that property. The debtor or the pledger retains ownership of the thing given as security. Is mortgage, ano yan? Is mortgage constituted to secure future advance valid? Okay, so yung utang in the future, wala pa ngayon, nasa future pa lang yung utang. Pwede na ba yung mortgage ngayon pa lang? The answer is yes. So pwede yung tinataw na continuing mortgage. Yan. So maaari, kunyari, uh, banko. Ayun, wala. Bank. So yung banko, meron siya tinataw na credit line. Meron siyang credit line kay Kung nag-extend siya rather ng credit line kay X. Ang nag-isip ng credit line, so parang wala namang account si X kay bank, pero pwedeng gamitin ni X yung isang, let's say, mga, pwede siya mag-issue ng cheque, for example, pambayad ng mga bayarin ni X. Drawn against the account kay B, pero wala naman talaga siyang account kay B. Pero parang pwede siyang pautangan ng pautangan ni X. May limit yan, syempre, credit line mo hanggang 1 million lang. Sige, mag-issue ka ng cheque eh, sa mga pangailangan mo. Pero siya ba yung singilin ka namin? Pero bago sila pumasok dyan sa ganyang agreement, the bank will require X to post a security. O mag-mortgage ka ng lupa sa amin. Ganyan. O, ngayon pa lang, mag-mortgage ka na. So real estate, mortgage. May utang na ba? Wala pa. 
wala pang wala pang utang in the future pa yung utang wala pa hindi pa siya nag hindi niya pa ina-avail yung credit line although andiyan na yung credit line pero wala pa siya wala at, at the time that they uh, instituted or constituted the real estate mortgage wala pang utang So what if in the future, for example, one month after X, nag-issue siya ng check, eh, kahit wala naman siyang account doon kay bank, in the amount of 100,000, in issue, issue, in issue ngayon yan. So yung pinag-issuehan niya, yung payee, will present the check kay B, o oh, in cash nito, in issue na X sa akin. So nawala ngayon si B ng 100,000 kasi si X nag-issue siya ng check, eh, gamit yung credit line agreement. Oh, maniningil ngayon si B kay X, o... Oh, Pina, ano, binayaran namin yung checking initial mo, 100,000. No? It's time to pay. Bayaran mo yung 100,000 yung big interest or whatever kung ano pinag-usapan nila. If X will not be able to pay, pwede yung sabihin ni B, okay, kung hindi ka makakapagbayad, I will now foreclose the real estate mortgage. So, ibebenta na namin to in a public auction. So, yun yung gagawin ni Uh, B. Ibebenta niya yung ni B, yung banko, yung property subject of a mortgage ibebenta niya at a public auction. Ang point pa rin dito, ang sinecure na obligation ay future obligation, no? future advances. Pwede. Okay. Hindi ba pwede na si B ang kinin niya na lang yung lupa? Huwag niya nang ibenta in a public auction. Akin na lang to. Total, hindi ka nakabayad ako. Akin na lang to Hindi pwede yon Ang tawag dyan ay Pactum Commissorium. Pactum Commissorium. Pactum Commissorium is a stipulation whereby the thing pledge or mortgage or the subject of antichresis shall automatically become the property of the creditor in the event of non-payment of the debt within the fixed term. Such stipulation is not void So kahit na mag-agree pa yung kabilang party dito, sige, yung kotse ko pag hindi pag hindi mo ah, pag hindi ako nakabayad sa na yan that is factum commissorium that stipulation even if agreed upon by both parties null and void it will not render the mortgage or the pledge null and void ang null and void lang dito ay yung stipulation so ibig sabihin valid pa rin yung pledge valid pa rin yung mortgage but yung stipulation na yung creditor na yung maging automatic owner of the Uh, property subject of the pledge or the mortgage in case the debtor will not be able to pay is a void stipulation as if walang ganang pinag-usapan. Anong gagawin kang void yun? You have to undergo, the creditor will have to undergo the process of foreclosure. Kailangan dumaan siya doon sa uh, proseso kung saan yung property na subject of pledge or mortgage ay ibebenta in a public auction. Kapag nabenta in a public auction, then sa napagbentahan, kolektahin niya yung gusto niya kolektahin. Ganun yung dapat na maging proseso. Hindi pwede na automatic. Huwag na tayong pag, na tayong pagdaanan yung ano, yung public auction, public auction. Nahihirapan lang tayo dyan. Akin na lang to. Ganun na lang. Akin na lang to. Para ito na yung pambayad dun sa utang. Parang ganun yung gusto niyang palabasin. That kind of stipulation is null and void. Okay. So, kailan nagkakaroon ng pactong komisoryum? First, there is a pledge, mortgage or antithesis of a property which is which serves a security of a principal obligation. And there is an express stipulation for the automatic appropriation by the creditor of the property in case of non-payment. Automatic appropriation. Ibig sabihin, wala na silang ibang kailangan gawin. Automatic kay creditor agad. Ayan yung mga elements ng pactong komisoryum. Kapag present yung dalawa na yan, Meron kang pactong komisorin which is a void stipulation. Again, what is rendered void is only the stipulation and not the pledge, the mortgage, or the anticresis, or the loan. They, they are not affected. Ang napektohan lang ay yung pactong komisorin. Tandaan, automatic appropriation ito, ha? hindi siya ibang bagay. So for example, sabi ni creditor kay debtor, oh sige, tanggapin ko yung pledge. Pero for example, pag hindi ka nakabayad, ibibenta mo siya sa akin. Para maging akin siya. Ibibenta mo siya sa akin para maging akin siya. Pag ganun, for example, ganun. Is it an automatic appropriation? Hindi. Kasi meron pa silang step na gagawin para mapunta dun sa uh, creditor yung property. Hindi naging automatic na sa kanya. Ang pinagbabawal, automatic na. Pag di ka nakabayad, akin na yan. Yun, bawal yun. 
Pero pag hindi ka nakabayad, sige, benta natin yan. Benta mo na lang sa akin yung property. Yun, pwede pa yun. Maaaring ganun. Okay? Uh, distinguish na lang yung automatic appropriation sa hindi automatic appropriation. Uh, umulit na naman itong pledge. A pledge is a contract whereby a debtor delivers to the creditor or third person a mobile or document evidencing incorporeal right for the purpose of securing the fulfillment of a principal obligation with the understanding that when the obligation is fulfilled, the thing delivered shall be returned with all the fruits and accession. So, yan yung definition kanina. Kailan na ano yung mga, um, tawag dito, um, elements para magkaroon ng pledge. And we are all familiar with this one kasi common nga siya. It is constituted to secure the fulfillment of a principal obligation. Siyempre, dapat meron mo ng utang bago ka magprenda or magpledge. The pledger is the absolute owner of the thing pledge. Next thing na yan. The person constituting, constituting a pledge should have the free disposal of the property or in the absence thereof, they are legally authorized for that purpose. Na explain na yan kanina. And then, as an additional requirement, a contract of pledge not appearing in a public instrument does not affect its validity. It is still valid between the parties, but it is not valid with respect to third person. So if you want your pledge to affect third persons, then you have to reduce your pledge in a public instrument. It is not required for the validity kasi valid pa rin siya, but the validity will be between the parties only, between the pledger and the pledgee. Third persons will not be affected by that contract of pledge if the contract of pledge does not appear in a public instrument. Okay. A contract of pledge is perfected when the thing pledge is placed in the actual possession. Kasi as, as mentioned earlier, kailangan ng delivery of the thing pledge. Kapag hindi din deliver yung pledge, yung thing pledge, then walang pledge. Meron ka lang loan, pero walang pledge. Yun yung problema. What will be void, kasi as, as a requirement for its validity, is the delivery of the thing pledge. So kung hindi mo siya i-deliver, hindi magiging valid yung pledge. Yung pledge lang. Pero yung loan obligation, yung principal obligation, tuloy pa rin yun. Wala nga lang security using pledge. Nawala yung pledge eh. Pero may utang ka pa rin. Hindi dahil hindi naging perfecto yung pledge, nawawalan ka ng utang. Meron ka pa rin utang, kailangan mo siyang bayaran. Pero wala na nga lang yung security ng pledge. What is a double pledge? No, a double pledge is when the same thing or property subject of a first pledge will be subject of another pledge. So, ibig sabihin, naka-pledge na yung property, ipi-pledge pa ulit. Ito ay hindi valid here in the Philippines because uh, a pledge, a, a property already pledged cannot be pledged again while the first pledge is subsisting. Hagat naka-pledge ang isang property, hindi mo siya pwedeng is subject of another pledge. Bakit? Kasi nga, delivery is a requirement for the uh, validity of a pledge. So kung naka-pledge na siya, pledge number one, nadudun siya sa unang creditor. So kung magkakaroon ka ng pledge number two over the same property, kailangan mo siyang kunin kay creditor number one para dalhin kay creditor number two. And that is antithetical or ibig sabihin, contra it contradicts the very nature of a pledge. Kasi kapag pledge, dapat the creditor continuous in possession of the property until and unless the obligation is paid. So kung ikukunin mo kay creditor number one para dalhin kay creditor number two yung subject matter of the pledge, it is as if nabayaran mo na yung creditor number one kasi hindi niya dapat ibigay yung property or ilet go yung property hanggat di siya nababayaran. Eh. If you will introduce uh, creditor number two into the story and pledge again, then ma-extinguish yung unang pledge kapag kinuha mo sa kanya yung property. So there's no such thing as double pledge. Maaari siguro on the same person, kanyari si X yung unang creditor, then nagpa-utang uli, covering the same property. Pwede yung ganun, but that is not a double pledge. Eh. Kasi ang double pledge, magkaibang creditor. Okay? So walang ganyan. What are the rights of a pledge? Pag sinabing pledge, ito yung uh, creditor. Ito yung nagpa-utang. Ano yung karapatan na nagpa-utang, tapos yung nagpa-utang sa kanya ay may pledge. First, to retain the thing until the debt is paid. Ito yung naka-explain ko lang. Diba? Kung ikaw yung creditor, kaya pwede dapat 
karapatan mo na panghawakan or i-process yung property subject of image hanggat hindi ka nababayaran. Kasi pag kinuha yan sa'yo, oh, parang as if nabayaran ka na. To, rebi, to be reimbursed for the expenses made for the preservation of that image. May mga bagay kasi na kailangan pagkagasasan para ma-preserve sila. Um, for example, kotse. Kunyari lang kotse, yun yung naka-pledge. Meron kasing, uh, I'm not a car enthusiast, no? pero meron kasing sabi-sabi na kapag hindi mo pinaandar yung kotse for a long period of time, nasisira siya. Diba? Sabi lang yun, hindi ko alam kung totoo yun o hindi. Pero sabihan natin totoo yun. Sa so, ano mangyayari? Yung creditor, kailangan niya paandarin yung kotse para hindi masira. Kung sakaling ka paandi rin niya, merong gas involved. No? May magkoconsume ng gas yun. O, sino magbabayad nun? Yung pledger dapat. Kasi karapatan ni pledge na ma-reimburse siya for the expenses made for the preservation of the team pledge. Number three, to bring any action pertaining to the pledger in order to recover it from or defend it against a third person. Kapag merong ume-excel na third person, inaangkin yung property subject of a pledge, kinukuha yung property subject of image, supposedly hindi siya yung pwedeng bumawi. No? Kasi hindi naman siya yung may-ari nun eh. Pledge lang siya. He is not the owner. Pero, pero, no? As a, uh, that's the general rule. Only the owner can recover the property if we need to hold yung property. But as a pledge, siyempre interested siya dun sa property. Ito nga yung ginamit ko. Ito nga yung hiningi ko. Which will serve as security. Tapos kukunin siya sa akin. So kung ano man yung mga karapatan ng pledger yung, or yung owner ng property, yun na rin yung magiging karapatan ko bilang pledge. Ibig sabihin, meron siyang karapatan na maghabol doon sa kumuha ng property sa kanya. Okay? Pwede, siya, pwede niya mag-file ng kaso, sabihin niya ako yung pledge kinuha niya yung kotse sa akin, kailangan ko yung babawi. Kasi nga, yan yung security doon sa obligation, doon sa loan na in-extend ko kay debtor. Ganyan yung mga karapatan ng pledge. What are the obligations of a pledge to take care of the team? Siyempre, interesado siya na pangalagaan yung property. Kasi pag nawala yan, oh, wala nang kwenta yung pledge. Diba? Kailangan niya ngayong alagaan. So hindi niya pwedeng pledge ng kotse tapos pinabayaan lang niya sa gitna ng kalye. So, what if ito yan ng MMDA or ng local government o ng mga police? Wala na, ano nang kwenta ng pledge mo? Wala na kinuha na ng police yung subject matter ng pledge. At syempre, kailangan alagaan niya nung pledge with the diligence of a good father of a pa family. No? Family may family. Pledge is liable for the loss or deterioration of the team by reason of fraud, negligence, delay, or violation of the terms of the contract. Kapag guilty si pledge ng fraud, negligence, delay, or violation of the terms of the contract, at yung mga uh, acts na yan resulted into the loss or deter deterioration of the team, then the pledge will be will shoulder the loss or deterioration. The pledge cannot deposit the team to pledge to a third person. So bawal yung oh, nakapledge sa akin to o sa iyo muna. Hindi pwede niyang ipa deposit yan doon sa third person unless there is a stipulation to the contrary. So kung napag-usapan nila, then okay lang. Pero kung wala na pag-usapan, the pledge cannot deposit the team pledge to another person. The pledge, the pledge is held liable for any loss or deterioration of the team pledge caused by the acts or negligence of that third person, no? the agents or the employees of the pledge. It is also the obligation of the pledge to apply the fruits, income, dividends, interest produced or earned by the property to the interest or expenses first, then to the principal. So kung ako yung pledge, anong gagawin ko? Merong fruits yung, ano, yung property na naka-pledge, merong dividends, merong interest. Anong gagawin ko sa mga bagay na ito? Pambayad yan. Pero saan mo siya i-apply? I-apply mo siya first sa mga interest and then sa expenses. And then kapag bayad na yung interest and expense, pwede mo na siyang i-apply as payment for the principal. Pang-apat, the pledge cannot use the team pledge. Siyempre, hindi, niya pwedeng, hindi naman yan pahiram eh. Pledge yan, no? security transaction lang yan. Except if the pledger had given him authority or permission. Kung inalaw naman ng pledger, okay lang. Pinabayaan niya eh. Or if the use of the thing is necessary for the preservation. But only for that purpose. So for example, may example ko kanina sa sakyan. 
Sabi nila yung aircon daw dapat once in a while binubuksan para hindi masira or yung TV once in a while kailangan buksan kasi kung hindi daw masisira daw yung TV. Yung mga ganun bagay. Again, I don't know, I don't have the technical knowledge kung totoo ba yung mga example na yun pero yun yung maaari kong ibigay na example. Also, the pledge has the obligation to return the thing pledged to the pledgeor when the principal obligation is fulfilled or satisfied. Siyempre, pagbayad na yung principal obligation, there is no need for the pledge. At dahil wala nang, wala nang gamit yung pledge, it is the obligation of the pledgee to return the thing pledged to the pledgeor. Now, what are the rights of the pledgeor? When we speak of the pledgeor, we mean the person who uh, constituted the pledge. Ibig sabihin siya yung debt, maaari siya yung debtor or a third person na pinage yung kanyang sariling property to secure the fulfillment of an obligation. Sa ano bang karapatan itong may-ari ng property na naka-pledge? Una, the right to dispose the thing pledged, no? provided there is consent of the pledgee. So dito, yung bagay na naka-pledge ay maaari palang ibenta uli, ibenta nung nag-pledge. No? Um, maaari niyang gawin yan, provided there is consent from the pledgee. The right to ask that the thing pledged should be deposited. Um, so for example, if yung naka-pledge na, na property ay ng uh, um, risk of being lost or damaged, the <coughs> excuse, then it can be deposited. And then right to substitute thing pledge. So kung meron siyang property na naka-pledge, then meron siyang another property that he wants to substitute yung unang property na pledge niya, then it is the right of the pledger to do so. Now, what is the right of the pledge when the debt has not been satisfied in due time. So, kung ako yung pledge at syempre bago ko, bago ko pag-usapan yung pledge, I will try to collect muna yung loan. Syempre, accessory contract lang yung pledge. So, don't concentrate on the pledge. You concentrate first on the loan contract. Basta, ano yung muna? Collectahin mo muna yung loan contract na yan. Sabihin mo, uh, it's the due date or maturity date na ng loan agreement. It is the time na nag-agree. It, it, ito na yung panahon na nag-agree tayo dati na uh, magbabayad ka. So magbayad ka na. Mag-demand ka muna for that payment. Then, if nag-refuse no, for some reason yung debtor na magbayad, then ito na ngayon yung tanong. Ano yung karapatan mo? Bilang pledge kapag hindi na satisfy yung obligation in due time. Sagot natin dyan, the pledge shall have the right to proceed with the sale of the thing at a public auction to raise funds for the payment of the obligation. Uh, ito nga yung very purpose of a pledge. Di ba? Para mabayaran yung utang sa'yo in case na hindi makapagbaya directly yung debtor. Anong gagawin ng creditor? Ibebenta niya. Nasa kanya na ito ngayon. Eh. Ibebenta niya yung property na naka-pledge in a public auction, ipapasubasta niya, kumbaga, to raise funds for the payment of the obligation. Ibebenta mo in a public auction yung property na pledge sa iyo para doon sa napagbentahan, kunin mo yung utang ng debtor na hindi niya pinayaran. Okay. Sa so, anong requirements natin para makapagpa-public auction ka? Ayan. The obligation must be due and unpaid. Kasi kung paid siya, syempre hindi ka magpa-public auction. The sale of the thing must be at a public auction. There must be notice to the pledger and the owner kung hindi siya yung kung hindi siya yung pledger ay kung hindi siya yung debtor stating the amount for which the sale is to be held. O ganito yung utang niya uh, 500,000. So syempre ibebenta ko to uh, for 500,000 plus gantong amount kasi ito yung mga ginastos ko in connection with the public auction. And then the sale must be conducted by a notary public. So hindi lang yung pledge yung gagawa ng public sale. Kailangan niyang kumonsulta at pumunta mag-file ng application for the conduct of 
the public auction sale with a notary public. Yung notary public ang gagawa ng pagpapasubasta or ng public auction. May the pledger participate in the public auction? Yes. No? So, pwede siyang mag-participate in the public auction. Moreover, he shall have a better right if he offers the same term as the highest bidder. So, you have the debtor, the creditor. Nagpa-umutang siya ng, uh, let's see, 1 million. Uh, Naka-pledge ngayon yung uh, car. Yan. At the date due for the payment, si debtor hindi nakapagbayad ng 1 million. O yung kotse na kanino? na kay creditor. Kasi pledge ito, kailangan i-deliver. Anong gagawin ni creditor kapag hindi makapagbayad si debtor? So, file siya for the, mag, mag, file siya for application ng uh, seal, of public, seal by public auction. Punta siya kay notary public. Si notary public, mag-a-announce siya ngayon. Siyempre, siyempre, based on the information to be provided by the creditor. Inform si debtor, inform yung pledger, kung ibang tao siya. Saying na yung kotse will be sold at public auction at 1. let's see, 2 million. But may 0.2 million na ngayon. Maaaring may interest na, maaaring, at hindi lang maaaring, siguradong merong cost of sales yan. May, may kabayaran yan. Si debtor ba, i-announce na ni notary public yan, oh, for sale na to, itong kotse na to. Can the debtor participate in the public auction? Yes. Kung si debtor ay magpa-participate, nag-bid siya, for example, 1.3 million. 1.3 million. Tapos meron pang third person, si X, na nag-bid ng 1.3 million din. Oh, para silang 1.3 million. Para silang highest leader. Oh, si Y, nag-bid siya 1.1 million. Nag-lag siya kasi hindi siya yung highest leader. No, ang highest bidder natin si X at saka si debtor. Uh, according to our according to the civil code, the notary public, the creditor must give preference to the bid of the debtor. So, i-chequera na ngayon si X kahit na napantayan niya pa yung bid ni debtor kasi yung debtor ang may better right of preference sa order of priority siya yung mauuna. What are the effects of the seed of the thing in pledge o pag nabenta na? it will extinguish the principal obligation even if the proceeds of the sale do not satisfy the whole amount of the obligation. So for example, dito na benta lang siya for 800,000. Kunyari 800,000 lang yung highest leader. Then kapag natuloy yan, nabinenta yung kotse dun sa highest leader for 800,000, 800,000 lang din ang makukuha ni debtor. Ay mali, ni creditor pala. Ni creditor. At kapag nakuha ni creditor yung 800,000 bilang application for the payment of the loan, then wala na siyang habol kay debtor. Hmm? Hindi niya na makukuha yung di, uh, diferensya. Okay. What is sobra? Pag sobra, kay creditor din makupunta lahat ng sobra niya. Sa kanya lahat yan. So whether kulang or sobra, kay creditor makupunta. Okay. If the proceeds of the sale exceed the amount yung itong binabanggit ko, the debtor is not entitled to the excess. The excess goes to the pledgee who is the creditor. This is to compensate him for the eventuality where the purchase price is less than the amount of the debt where he cannot receive any deficiency unless there is contrary agreement or in case of legal pledge, the pledger is entitled to the excess. So dito as a general rule, no? In case of pledge, whether kulang or sobra, ibig sabihin, pag kulang, wala nang habol yung creditor sa deto. Pero pag sobra, kay creditor magpupunta yan. Ganun yung, ganun yung arrangement natin sa pledge unless there is uh, a stipulation to the contrary. Okay? Let us talk about real estate mortgage. What is a real estate mortgage? Na-define na ito kanina, ulitin lang natin. It is a contract where the debtor secures the credit to the creditor, the fulfillment of the principal obligation, especially subjecting to such security an immovable property or real rights over immovable property in case the principal obligation is not fulfilled at the time stipulated. So dito, ang subject, natin, subject matter ng real estate mortgage, unlike a pledge, ang real estate mortgage will cover 
immovable properties or real rights over immovable. Siyempre, magkabaliktad sila. Pag pledge kasi, it requires delivery, kaya personal property ang iyong um, i-deliver. Dito sa real estate market, as a term would imply, real property or immovable properties ang subject matter. Pero dito walang delivery involved. Pledge, kailangan mag-deliver. Real estate mortgage, walang mag-deliver. Registration is necessary to bind third persons but not for the validity of the contract. So just like in pledge earlier, meron silang public instrument na kailangan i-execute. Pero even without that, it's still valid between them but not, but not with respect to third persons. So being an accessory contract, Yung real estate mortgage, it is its consideration is one and the same as that of the as that of the principal obligation. So nakasalalay yung buhay niya doon sa buhay ng principal obligation. Okay. So ang real estate mortgage will cover only immobile property or alienable rights imposed upon immobile. It must appear in a public instrument and it must be registered in the registry of deeds necessary to bind third persons only for the purpose of binding third person so we have another form of mortgage chattel mortgage naman it is a contract by virtue of which this time personal property is recorded in the chattel mortgage register as a security for the performance of an obligation so dito personal property ang subject matter ng contract pero hindi siya dinideliver pag dineliver mo siya pledge ang tawag doon but there if there's no delivery there's only registration, then that is a shuttle mortgage. Okay. And, uh, ganun na, maparas naman ng purpose ang real estate mortgage or shuttle mortgage. Uh, that ang um, purpose nila, whether real property or personal property, as long as hindi i-deliver, pero i-register natin, is to secure the performance of an obligation to pay or to give. Yan. So, what if hindi makapagbayad? Yo, just like doon sa pledge na ibebenta sa mortgage, meron tayo tinatawag na prosesong foreclosure. What is foreclosure? It is a remedy available to the mortgagee, meaning the creditor, the mortgagee, in which he subjects the mortgage property to the satisfaction of the obligation. So just like in the pledge, in the pledge, yung, pledge, yung subject matter of the pledge will be sold in a public auction, Ganon din dito yung foreclosure. Yung, uh, dito, yung real estate, yung real property or yung personal property will be sold also at public auction. May dalawang uri ng foreclosure seal for mortgages. So you have judicial foreclosure which will be governed by rules in state of the rules of court. Pag sinabing judicial, you have to file an action in court para magkaroon ng uh, foreclosure of mortgage while an extrajudicial settlement a settlement extrajudicial foreclosure of mortgage the mortgage is given a special power of authority to sell the mortgage property pursuant to act number 3135 so in this case there will be no uh, intervention by the court although you will still have the assistance of the court no particularly the clerk of court or don't come to file an extrajudicial foreclosure of mortgage. Hindi mo siya sa sarili nin, meron pa rin intervention ng court, pero hindi na siya kaso. Yung judicial, ano kasi, foreclosure kasi of mortgage, meron kang kailangan i-file na complaint doon sa korte at magkakaroon kayo ng hearing, depende kung ano pa yung tingin ng judge kung itutuloy ba o hindi ang foreclosure. Sa extrajudicial uh, foreclosure of mortgage, just have to file. Actually, you can also seek the assistance of a notary public commission to do the extrajudicial for foreclosure. But again, this, ma this must be under the supervision of the clerk of court of the regional trial court where the property is located. Okay. Okay, so what do you do? It is initiated by filing a petition with the office of the sheriff of the, or the clerk of court. Na. It, it, it may also be initiated through a notary public, yung mga binabanggit ko kanina, umuulit na lang tayo, commission in the place where the property is situated. Okay. Then, 
Notice containing the place and date of the sale is required before an auction sale is made in an extrajudicial foreclosure. So magkakaroon siya ng notice of public auction. Ipapaskil yan. May mga lugar na kailangan pagpaskilan. Sa City Hall, kailangan ipaskil. Sa barangay, kung nasaan na doon yung property, kailangan ipaskil. Sa korte, kailangan ipaskil. Magkakaroon din ng ano dito, no? ng publication. So kailangan ipublish siya in newspaper of general circulation. Notifying the public na magkakaroon ng uh, public auction sale involving a foreclosed property. Naka-indicate doon yung oras, yung lugar at yung oras, araw, yung petsa at yung oras kung kailan gagawin yung public auction sale. Usually, ginaganap ito sa mga uh, city hall o kaya sa mga court, court uh, hall of justice, no? sa mga hall of justice. In judicial foreclosure, the rules of court specifically gives the mortgagee the right to claim for deficiency in case of deficiency. Sa pagkulang, in a judicial foreclosure, pwedeng mabawi pa nung uh, mortgagee yung kakulangan. No? Unlike in a pledge, kapag kulang, wala nang habol. But in a foreclosure of mortgage, kapag kulang, maaari din habulin. In Act Number no. 3135, Governor Extrajudicial Foreclosure of Mortgage, uh, does not give a mortgage the right to recover deficiency after public auction. Neither does it expressly or impliedly prohibit such recovery. So dito, pwede pa rin naman siya makarecover in, in extrajudicial foreclosure. Wala nagbabawal sa kanya na makarecover doon sa kakulangan. The right to recover deficiency has been categorically resolved. Thus, the mortgagee is entitled to recover the deficiency in case the sale proceeds are not sufficient to cover the debt in extrajudicial foreclosure. So, um, unlike, again, in pledge, kapag pledge, tas kulang hinapagbentahan public auction to pay for the obligation, wala nang habol yung pledge. Yung mortgage meron pa. Sa so, pag nabenta, kunyari nabenta yung property na naka-mortgage for 1 million, pero ang utang ay 1 million 200,000 din. Yung 200,000 na kulang ay maaari pa rin habuli ng mortgage from the mortgagor. Yan, bahala na silang, bahala na siyang maghanap o maghapol sa so, paano niya uh, mapupunan yung kakulangan. Pag sobra, ang maganda kapag sobra, ibabalik mo dun sa mortgagor. Yan. Again, Sa pledge, sa pledge, kapag kulang, oh, bahala na yung ano, creditor. Wala na siyang mapapala. Pag sobra, yung sobra ay mapapunta kay creditor mortgagee. Sa, ay, sorry, creditor pledger pala. Creditor pledger. Sa mortgage, kapag kulang, pwede maghabol yung creditor sa debtor. Pag sobra, kailangan i-deliver nung, nung creditor yung sobra papunta kay debtor. What is this redemption? Redemption is a transaction by which the mortgagor reacquires or buys back the property which may have passed under the mortgage or divest the property of the lien which the mortgage may have created. Redemption, babawiin. Ano nangyari dito? You have this debtor and you have this creditor. Ngayon, nagkaroon ng utang in the amount of 1 million and to secure the payment or the fulfillment of that obligation, the debtor constituted a real estate mortgage over his property. Okay. So there is a real estate mortgage. This one is to be registered with the Register of Deeds. Okay. So creditor, I see debtor, kahit na may demand na si creditor for the payment, hindi siya nakapagbayad. So ang nagagawin ni creditor, mag-apply siya for judicial or extrajudicial foreclosure of the mortgage. So itong real estate mortgage na yan ay ipo-foreclose at ibibenta ini public auction. Yeah, announce kung kailan at saan magaganap yung public auction. Nag-participate si X, si Y, and GZ. Nag-participate sila. Even the creditor nag-participate. Pwede yung debtor din nag-participate. Okay. Ang nanalang highest leader, si Z. Okay. So ang bid niya ay 1.3 million. Ano mangyayari? Si creditor, pwede niyang kunin yung utang. O, kolektahin niya na yung utang niya, 1 million. Pwede niyang hingin kay Z. Si Z yung nag-bid eh, o magbayad ka. Bukod sa 1 million, pwede niyang singin din yung interest at saka yung cost of sales. Gumastos siya para dyan sa pag-conduct ng, pag ng uh, public auction na yan. So kunyaring meron kong naiwan ng 200,000, it will go to 
the debtor. Sa kanya ngayon, magpunta yung 200,000 na sobra yung lagi. So, sino ngayon ang mga may ari? O kanino ngayon magpunta yung property kay Zian? Si debtor ngayon merong right of redemption. Ibig sabihin, pwede niyang mabawi kay Z yung property na nakuha niya na in a public option. So, meron tayong ganun. Redemption. Okay, may dalawang uri ng redemption, equity of redemption and right of redemption. Ano yung equity of redemption? Equity of redemption is the right of a mortgagor to redeem the mortgage property after his default in the performance of the conditions of the mortgage but before the seed of the mortgage property of or confirmation of the seed. It applies in case of judicial foreclosure. Sa judicial foreclosure, ibig sabihin ganito. Si, si debtor at saka si creditor. May utang 1 million. May naka-mortgage na lupa. Real estate mortgage. Si debtor hindi makapagbayad. Anong gagawin ni creditor? Judicial or extrajudicial foreclosure. Ang pinili niya, judicial foreclosure. So, file siya sa court. Natanggapin ngayon ng court yan. Pero bago magsimula ang lahat, sasabihin ng court kay debtor, debtor, binibigyan kita ng huling pagkakataon para hindi masaya ang oras nating lahat dito. Bayaran mo na yung utang mo kay creditor. Ang tawag dyan ay equity of redemption. It is made before the sale of the mortgage property. Bago mo pa, gawin yan. Okay? Ano ang period ng equity of redemption? 90 to 120 days. Hindi naman siya matagal. 90 to 120 days. Ano naman itong right of redemption? The right of redemption is the right of the mortgage or to redeem the property within one year from the date of the registration of the certificate of sale. It applies in case of extrajudicial foreclosure. So ito naman, extrajudicial foreclosure na nangyayari after the sale. So kung nandito yun yung public auction, nandito yung one year period mo to exercise your right of redemption. Not from the sale, but from the registration of the certificate of sale with the register of deeds. So hanggang hindi siya nare-register, hindi magraran yung period for the right of redemption. So magkakaroon ng, di ba magkakaroon ng public auction? O sabi, o ito nanalo. O ito na ang certificate of sale. Para tumakbo agad yung period for the redemption, you have to bring that certificate of sale with the, to the uh, register of deeds. Once registered na yan, tatakbo na ngayon yung period, one year period for the debtor mortgagor to exercise his or her right of redemption. The right of redemption must be made within one year from the time of the registration. The payment of the purchase price of the property plus 1% interest per month together with the taxes thereon, if any. Paid by the purchaser with the same rate of interest computed from the date of the registration. So yung redemption price niya is not limited doon sa kung magkano yung binayaran nung highest bidder. Kailangan din niyang bayaran yung 1% per month na interest at kung may tax, kailangan din niyang bayaran mo. Then, for you to be able to exercise the right of redemption, written notice of the redemption must be served on the officer, ito yung sheriff or yung office of the clerk of court, who made the seal and a duplicate file with the proper register of deeds. So, dalawa yung bibigyan mo ng notice. Uh, actually, tatlihin mo na pati yung, ano, yung, ano uh, tawag dito? Yung, debt, yung creditor, servan mo na rin ng notice of redemption. Yung office of the clerk of court, yung sheriff, bigyan mo ng kopya. Yung register of deeds, bigyan mo ng kopya ng redemption. Okay? So here we have a comparison between pledge and real estate mortgage. A pledge is a real contract, while a real estate mortgage is only a consensual contract. Pag sinabing real contract, it requires delivery. Since there is no delivery required for real estate mortgage, it cannot be considered as a real contract even if the subject matter of the 
mortgage of, or of the contract is a real property. Hindi yun tinutukoy dito. Pag sinabing real contract, it means contract which is perfected by delivery. Consensual contract, contracts which are perfected by mere consent. Real estate mortgage is perfected by mere consent. Pledge covers personal properties and real estate mortgage covers real properties. Pledge in pledge, the possession of the team is vested in the creditor kasi kailangan mo siyang i-deliver. While in real estate mortgage, the possession of the team remains with the debtor because he continues to be, uh, there's no delivery required in real estate mortgage. The pledge, he has the right to receive the fruits of the team pledge with the obligation of applying the same to the interest of the debt if owing and the balance if added to the principal. So kung yung subject matter ng pledge ay in, uh, tawag dito, meron siyang fruits, meron siyang natural, industrial, or civil fruits, yung mga fruits na yan ay i-apply niya as payment for what? For the interest. And then, kung meron pang maiiwan, i-apply niya na sa principal. Seal at public auction of the team is always extrajudicial in case of a pledge, while in mortgage it may be judicial or extrajudicial. So ang formality mo for the pledge, the description of the thing, and the date of the pledge must appear in a public instrument. Otherwise, it is not valid in so far as third persons are concerned. Pero valid siya between the pledger and the pledgee. Real estate mortgage must be registered with the register of deeds. Otherwise, it is not valid against third persons. Again, uli, binding siya between the parties. Now, let us ano naman, distinguish pledge and shuttle mortgage para sa patungkol sa personal property. In pledge, delivery is necessary, while in shuttle mortgage, delivery is not necessary. In pledge, the registration in the registry property is not necessary, while in shuttle mortgage, the very essence of a mortgage is the registration in the shuttle mortgage register para maging valid siya to third person. So, pledge is um, provided under Article 21. 2112 of the New Civil Code. The procedure for sale of the team given in security in shuttle mortgage is uh, governed by Act Number 1508. Ah, so, ano na pala ito? Yung parang foreclosure na pala. In pledge, if the property is sold, the debtor is not entitled to the excess unless otherwise agreed upon. Napupunta yan kay creditor. Pero kung nag-usap sila, then pwede kay debtor mapunta yan. If the property is foreclosed, the excess goes to the debtor. Sa mortgage, kapag kulang, pwede maghapon sa debtor. Kapag sobra, magpunta kay debtor. In pledge, the creditor is not entitled to recover the deficiency even if they have stipulated. Kahit mag-usap pa sila, hindi na mangyayari yan. Pag sinabi niya na, oh, pag kulang to, may utang ka pa rin na hindi pwede yan sa pledge. But in mortgage, the creditor is entitled to recover the deficiency from the creditor except, meron tayo exception dito, if it is chattel mortgage or is a security for the purchase of property on installment. So, sa law on sales ninyo, siguro natutunan nyo ito, di ba kapag on installment ang pagbebenta ng property, pwede mag-constitute ng chattel mortgage over the property once na nag-execute yung creditor, yung buy, yung seller dito, hinabol na, finorclose na yung mortgage, hindi niya na mahahabol pa yung kakulangan. Kasi nga, ang pinag-uusapan ay seal of property on installment. In pledge, possession is given or vested in the creditor. In shuttle mortgage, possession remains with the debtor. Pledge is a real contract because you have to deliver it, while shuttle mortgage is a formal contract because it requires the execution of a public instrument. Pledge must be a public instrument containing the description of the thing pledged and the date thereof to bind third persons in shuttle mortgage. It must be recorded in a public instrument. It must be recorded in public instrument and in the registry of mortgage property or in the registry of deeds to bind third persons. I think that's it for credit transaction. So, tandaan nyo yung mga uh, nangyayari, especially kapag uh, nagkakaroon na ng public auction. Kanina magpupunta yung kulang, kanina magpupunta yung sobra. Uh, ano mangyayari sa kulang, kanina magpupunta yung sobra. Distinguish nyo between pledge and shuttle mortgage. Importante yan. At importante din malaman ninyo 
na ang credit transaction ay accessory contract lamang at nakasalalay ang kanilang buhay sa validity ng principal obligation. Okay? So that's it for credit transactions. I hope na marami kayo natutunan. Menyo mabilis lang yung aking pag-discuss but you have all the rights no, na i-slow down siya. No? So 50% ano, uh, <clears throat> speed or oh, whatever. Bahala kayo kung anong gusto ninyo gawin. No? In the meantime, that ends our discussion on credit transactions. Hopefully may natutunan tayo and hopefully um, may higana kayong magtanong no? kung sakali. Kung wala, okay lang naman. Kung meron, okay lang din. Okay? Bye-bye and thank you for listening.